Good morning. So 40 years ago, there was a laparoscopic uh, surgical revolution. And the, one of the key workhorses for these for surgeons was a was a uh, laparoscopic GIA. This is a linear stapler that revolutionized thoracic surgery, general surgery, colon surgery, and bariatric surgery. What we're gonna do is replace this with this. <clears throat> so we're a clinically staged company. We've done over 50 cases. We're targeting bariatric, digestive, metabolic surgery. We have an incisionless technology. So we are, with our technology, you do not, surgeons do not need to make an incision in the organ, which is critical in the recovery. Our procedures can, can, uh, can be done in an outpatient uh, setting. Just in bariatric surgery, our TAM is about $3 billion. We're led by a seasoned team, and we're focused today on getting our regulatory approvals. So starting in bariatric surgery, it's a, it's a very large market. There's not been a lot of successes except, for, except maybe in the last, uh, last uh, few years. But uh, today, only surgeons, bariatric surgeons, control these patients. Dietitians, GPs, and gastroenterologists have very limited roles. So just by the numbers, there's... Uh, there's about a million procedures worldwide. In the US, there's about 250,000 cases, and that represents 1% eligible patients uh, uh, choosing to get surgeries every year. So 99% of the, of the patients choose not to have bariatric surgery, even though the profile, the safety profile of the procedures today are the same as, as in, in gallbladder surgery. So if, if you could uh, dramatically change this paradigm, you could you, you could really uh, you could grow the market uh, tremendously. So the anastomotic uh, market is uh, is estimated to be over five billion dollars. So it's it's very common. All uh, reconstructive surgeons that do reconstructive surgeries use GIAs and do these anastomoses on a daily basis. Recently, as as um, you might be aware, the uh, bariatric societies. The International and the U.S. Bariatric Society have dramatically uh, increased their recommendations for surgery, and it's uh, it's the uh, uh, the market believes that it's really start, starting to grow uh, for not only for weight loss but also for for metabolic surgery for for the treatment of of diabetes. My partner uh, Michel Gagné is is a uh, is a key pioneer in the field, but also is, is, was the inventor of the sleeve gastrectomy. The sleeve gastrectomy represents 60% market share of all the procedures done all over the world. And in young surgeons, surgeons that uh, uh, are less than 50 years old, it represents close to 80% of the, of the procedures worldwide. And all over the world, they do the, these procedures, the sleeve gastrectomy, like Michel Gagné uh, in, uh, taught them. So, uh, so this is the, uh, the team, the, the founding team. Uh, I, this is my eighth startup. Michel Gagné is, is the most recognized uh, surgeon in, in uh, digestive surgery and bariatric surgery. He has over 400 articles. Uh, we will have close to 20 uh, publications and presentations at societies uh, this year. Todd is, uh, runs a, a group of uh, engineers in Minneapolis. And Lisa is, is our, our chief uh, regulatory officer. We're, we're really focused on regulatory approval. But we, have our, we will uh, grow our revenues by teaching new procedures. Number five, we will have an incisionless uh, procedure for colon surgery, where there's, well, there'll be no incisions inside the GI tract. We will have uh, a gastrodigenostomy and a gastroileostomy uh, procedure that we will teach uh, general surgeons. We have a metabolic surgery procedure, we have a sleeve revision procedure, and we have a primary SADI procedures. Each of these categories are, are represent uh, uh, over a billion dollar market opportunity for our, our company. So, so here are the three, uh, uh, there's really two technologies that are in the market today. There's suturing uh, on the right, the, uh, 
These patients uh, have open, open surgery that require five to six days in the hospital recovery. Uh, the GIAs and laparoscopy was one to three days. With our technology, it, um, bariatric surgery and general surgery and colorectal surgery can move to an outpatient setting. This is our end effector. Our end effector is actually a magnet. Uh, our magnet has a soft, it has a flat surface, which does the necrosis, and it has a gutter around the magnet, and that's where the healing happens. And I'll show you kind of how, how it works. This is the commercial version that is in clinical trials uh, uh, today. And so here's an ex an, a explanation of how it's used. So this is a sleeve patient that had a uh, sleeve maybe three or four years ago. Uh, has not hit the weight loss that they, uh, that they desired. So the surgeon would place the first magnet transorally on a catheter, would, would uh, drive it with an endoscope as, fa as far as they can go to the ligaments of trites. We, the surgeon would drag it to the area that he w w wishes to make the anastomosis. While he's doing that, a second magnet is, is placed just beyond the pylorus. The two are laparoscopically lifted together and uh, the two magnets lock, and then uh, the, uh, the magic happens. The, there's a slow necrosis, and over the next uh, two to three weeks, this, uh, the magnets drop automatically, and, uh, and these, um, the anastomosis is, is formed. So what you have, what, and here, here's some capabilities just to show you, just to show you how it works. Uh, so now the surgeon is driving the magnet, and then, uh, and then there's a system to catch the magnet laparoscopically, and then you can move, move the magnet to the right location. And with, with the same tool, you can actually lift the, uh, you'll see in a second, lift the, uh, the ilium here to uh, the duodenum where there's a second magnet, and, uh, and then you can, you can let go, and then uh, do some fine tuning, and then, there's a fusion, and little by little, over the next three to four weeks, the magnet drops, and then you have a bifurcation, and you have, uh, and, and, and so this is a procedure that doesn't, there's no incision inside the GI tract. There's, it's a very slow forming anastomosis, and, uh, and, and this patient can be sent home right after the procedure, and the procedure takes, will take, uh, 15 to 20 minutes uh, in the operating room. So we are, uh, we are about to get our first commercial approvals in, in Canada. We should expect uh, approval, a CE mark of our first generation product uh, next year. And, and, uh, but it's not just bariatric surgery, it's also general surgery. There's, there, we've identified over 50 procedures that uh, were, were that were magnets could be used to form anastomoses in a less invasive way. Here's just a list of, of some of these uh, procedures that are done every day at hospitals uh, all over the all over the world. So on funding, uh, we've um, we more or less self-funded for the first uh, first few years. Uh, we raised uh, 15 million dollars early last year, and uh, we will be raising. Uh, a thirty million dollar round at the end at the end of this year, uh, we would welcome an institutional investor to take a piece of, a piece of that round. Uh, although we, we have uh, we are uh, accepting uh, uh, term sheets at this at this moment. So uh, we have over twenty six patents uh, on our technology, and uh, we've. Uh, uh, bariatric surgery is is a, is a hot market. There's been three acquisitions in the last in the last uh, few few years, uh, and, um, and new players are coming in to uh, look at different uh, technologies. So I think it's an ex exciting uh, environment for uh, for investors. So uh, we believe this is a game changing technology in, in, with a huge TAM. And uh, this is uh, much easier for surgeons to do in one half or, two, or one third of the time. It's uh, a lot cheaper for the healthcare system. Uh, and, uh, and so we expect, we expect 
to have very rapid, uh, rapid growth in revenue. Uh, in the market research we found, there's, uh, when we interview bariatric surgeons, would you like to operate this way? We, we get an astounding, you know, between 90 and 100 uh, percent, absolutely, uh, because some of, these, some of these anastomoses that they have to do, whether it's robotically or, th or through sewing or stapling, or there's always a risk of, uh, of bleed and a risk of leak, and, uh, and with this technology, there is, there is virtually no risk of bleeding and no risk of a leak. Great, thank you so much.